realize sometimes this is so exciting because I can go out and I can see the same things over and over again and still have fun with it because it's just so cool, like a little treasure hunt. But then, then you come across something that you've never seen that happens to have these glorious colors on it. Oh. been really dry this week actually it's been kind of dry this October uh, and so it's gonna be a little bit harder to hit the pockets where the mushrooms are so I have an area that I would like to go but I need to check the elevation because in the fall mushrooms start producing higher up in the higher elevations where it gets colder sooner and then working their way down so I want to make sure I'm in high enough elevation that's even gonna be possibly producing mushrooms so I'm check this out and see where I'm at, what elevation I am. I uh, have an idea, and I definitely need a new map because it's falling to pieces. We're about 3,000 right now, and I'd like to be <clears throat> 35 to 4,000 to get started today because I think that's about where the action might be happening. So, carry on. <laughs> it's so beautiful out here. Uh, so, I am at a little higher elevation now. Um, and so I think this is a good spot to start kind of looking around for some mushrooms. And I just want to make a note about the elevation thing. So if you heard me say I wanted to be about 3,500 to 4,000 feet, that's for my specific region where I am right now. If you're living in Colorado, you're going to turn your nose up at the elevation because your elevation's way different than what we have here. So essentially what you're trying to do uh, when it comes to elevation is you have to contrast it to what, what are your high elevations in your area? Where are your mountain peaks in your area? Where's the natural snow line in your area? Those kinds of factors. So for me, um, right now, 4,000 is kind of like the higher end of elevations when it comes to, you know, the beginning of fall mushroom season. So wherever you are regionally, it's going to be different. So I don't want you to take that information and apply it to your area if you live somewhere completely different than Pacific Northwest. So just keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> this thing is so huge. Oh, this is beautiful. I know in some other videos I've talked about the red belted conch before, but here it is again. A lot of times these kind of mushrooms that are growing shelf like people call them conchs. Like you conch your head, not like conch, like the shell, which would seem more pretty, but it's conch. Or they're called polypores, because the undersurface is all pores, polypores, lots of pores. Such is the common name that you can use for these kinds of things. Oh, this one here is years and years and years old. Um, and produces billions and billions of spores in its lifetime. You can usually find them on dead and dying trees. You can see this tree is clearly not a full tree anymore. I think it smells good too. Mm. And some people do um, use this medicinally. It's just not one of your... Um, big top medicinal mushrooms that people usually collect. Um, it's beautiful. Hopefully this will stay for a few more years. So there's a slime mold here. It's no longer in its slimy stage. It's in its stage where it's producing spores. So when this is fresh, it looks like little dots of pink Pepto-Bismol have been kind of spattered around. So now, instead of being slimy, it has now created its spores and they're in these little pockets. And if you kind of squeeze it, little spores will be all dusted about. There we go, full of spores. Boop, boop. Ooh, mold on poop again. Come see this really cool tree down here. <laughs> oh. So this is a giant ponderosa pine tree. Hmm. It uh, at one time was one of the tallest in North America, but a few years ago, the top of it fell off. And since then, I've been seeing all the signs of it dying happening. Uh, I mean, the top probably fell off because it was already dying, um, but this last year it's been dropping giant limbs. You can see them all strewn about. So the time has come for this giant and eventually the whole thing will come down. Um, 
which is kind of sad. Uh, today is really more about what can I find. Uh, I'm not really going for a specific mushroom, but if we find something great, of course I'll talk about it. Mm. Hugging the giants of the forest. <laughs> so this is a shrimp. It's like mushroom bump or shroom bump kind of combined. Anyways, a lot of times when it's drier or there are specific mushrooms that tend to grow this way. So you have to get good at eyeing little spots of dirt that have been lifted up. This is actually a really easy to spot one compared to some because a lot of the mushroom is poking out. Um, but let's unbury it and see what it is. All right. Is the sunshine too much? No, it's good. Okay. So this is a Quartinaria species. Uh, it's not a Matsutake. It's not a white chanterelle, which are the two species that are edible, delicious mushrooms that often grow under shrimps. Um, but you can see it has a little bit of a leftover skirt right here and some rusty orange spore deposits on top. You see, I can just wipe it away. Um, there we go. Quartinarius. Don't eat it. Oh, my nose is so runny. Ah, uh, nothing. A lot of times when you check little bumps, there's nothing under there. Or really moldy old mushroom. But yeah, she should check. Always check. Oh, look, the trail. I feel like I need to look up as much as I need to look down. But no, I should just, like, look. I don't know. Mm. See these dudes? Some kind of mycena. After a good rain, the forest floor can be covered in all sorts of types of mycena. So we are going to hit the road again. Sometimes you just got to hit a lot of spots at once. Maybe it's only another quarter mile down the road and it's a good area. So we're going to go explore, see what we can find. Let's go. It is a hidden melon species, which is super awesome looking. Throughout their life, they can look like various shapes and forms because their tissue on the top is really soft. So as rain comes or as they age, it can really warp and twist. So this one, you can see different areas and different pockets that it has been, uh, the flesh has kind of been indented. And take a look, there is a tree right in the center of this thing. So what came first, the mushroom or the tree? The tree definitely did. This mushroom has just been growing throughout this season. But what's neat about this mushroom and a variety of others that grow in this style is that they just grow around whatever obstacle might be in their way. Uh, if it's a rock or a stick, you know, they just start to kind of envelop that. But what's fascinating is that sometimes they can go around living things like trees or even just a single blade of grass and they go around it but they don't restrict it so that living thing that's in the middle of this mushroom continues to grow and it doesn't kill it so this mushroom will eventually decay and go away and the tree's going to be okay it's, it's going to keep going uh, one thing that's interesting on the bottom of this mushroom which i'm not going to take this one out i found a different hidden elm yesterday and i have it in my basket so instead of taking that one out i'll just show you on here um, it's kind of hard to see, but on the bottom are tiny little spines, tiny little teeth. So, uh, this is one of the fungi that are in the teeth fungi category. And you can see this one too, it's growing around a stick. And that's what it looks like sliced open. This one, uh, is a different species, I believe, than that one there. And this one has really deep blue flesh and then kind of an orange colored stem. Uh, where that one there looks, uh, could be a similar species. I don't know. I'd have to look at the underside and the stem a little more, but we're going to leave it there. Maybe I should get my olive clip out. Let's see. There's little tiny soft spines. This looks like bumps, but they're all little tiny teeth, little tiny spines. Wow, these are crazy looking. Let's take a look. Wow, I think I, man, I really need to get a shovel. Uh, you never know 
You're gonna find mushrooms. This, I don't even like recognize this. That's what's kind of cool about it. I have no idea what this is. And who Look. found it? You found it. Cause it was right by your door when you got out of the Jeep next to all the trash. Pick up after yourself, people. In a propane tank, in a fire pit. Someone dumb is gonna come up here and start a fire and leave that in there and that will be disastrous. Look at this thing, I have no idea what it is. It's like pinks and purples and oranges. And like the margin is like really pretty pink. The gills are very uniform, almost looks hygrosabee like, I don't know. I don't know, the stem is so thick. I didn't get the base all the way. I need to find the base. I'm gonna pick another one. I gotta take this one home and see what it is. It's, it's so distinctive looking, like it has such distinctive features. I feel like I should know what it is, but maybe I've just never found it before, which means successful day in the woods, almost complete. Find something you've never seen before, something you can eat and something kind of weird. But do you see the colors? Isn't that wild looking? There's something um, that I want to keep separate from other stuff that I want to take home and do some more research or looking into. I like to keep it separate like this. I do that a lot of times with my edible mushrooms as well. Ooh, that's cool. You should hold that up. Wow. Hold on. Wow. Look at the purples. It's like a sunset. Oh my gosh. Um, I need to take some pictures actually for documentation. Okay, I'm gonna get the other one back out actually because um, if I'm gonna post records of this, I wanna get like actually good photos of all the angles of the mushroom. The color is just so crazy! This is why sometimes this is so exciting because I can go out and I can see the same things over and over again and still have fun with it because it's just so cool, like a little treasure hunt. But then, then you come across something that you've never seen that happens to have these glorious colors on it. Oh, And the reality is this is probably something that's super easy to identify. But you know what? I've never seen it. It's exciting. Uh, just because this is something I've never seen before, I want to try and get good documentation just because what if the species hasn't been collected and categorized, um, at least scientifically, uh, in very many places. Because the amount of time I spend out in the woods, I mean, sure there are things I probably haven't seen a lot of, but if it's a first for me, it could also be something that's not collected regularly. So I want to get good documentation photos from all different angles. And here I'm gonna get a close up where you can see that there is a little bit of tissue there that is still connecting the cap in the stem. So it's like kind of like a veil, but it is just so marginal. It's good to do photos out in the field exactly where you found things. Um, things are fresh, things don't fade in color, they don't dry out. Little tiny details like that piece of veil could easily just go away uh, if you carry it around in a basket. Seriously, sunset style. It's so amazing. And those gills are so uniform as well. It's just so beautiful. Okay, now time to slice one open. Oh, it's like a sunset on the inside too. It's darker orange down there, it's lighter up there. So it's good to slice the mushroom open and get a photo of that as well, because it shows like what it looks like fresh, truly what the color is on the inside, because you can see that one kind of has variations of color. Um, but also the, the flesh could change colors. You could slice it and it starts to bruise a certain color as oxidation takes place. So it's good to do that out in the field and get some photos of it, because you never know when you get home, the flesh might be a totally different color after oxidizing for a while or drying out. And then I'll also take notes on what other things we're seeing around here so I know what kind of environment. We have officially found this. Um, I will even have to note that we found it um, right outside of a fire pit ring. 
because that could be a factor in like the pH soil levels or if the charcoal has anything to do with it. So even that, even that needs to be made mention. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited about this. So this is kind of turning into a little citizen science episode. Perfect, this perfect. is great. <laughs> I wish I want to do more episodes to talk about that actually. So this is good to just to enter into it. All right, so what I'm gonna do is since I'm putting them in this brown paper bag, uh, I'm actually gonna just write some notes on the bag. I don't have any note cards with me today, but uh, I'm gonna write the elevation. And let's see, I'll have to double check, but I think we are about 3,700 right now. Um, and we're gonna write what kind of trees are around here. And there's Ponderosa. I saw Grand Fir, I saw Douglas Fir, and I'll take a look around to see what else might be in the nearby vicinity. Uh, I'm gonna make note that we found it next to a fire ring. Cause that could have something to do with it. I am gonna take a note of the color cause if the color changes, I do have my photographs, but I'm gonna say like it even has more purples down near the base and then it kind of fades upwards into pinks and oranges. And even just with that information, I could be able to figure out what it is. It's pretty cool. And I'm gonna take a look in my book just uh, real quick before we leave this spot to see if I can get a quick answer. But I have a feeling I might have to take this home. Well, I am gonna take it home, but I have a feeling I might have to take the research home to figure out what it is. All right, I'm also gonna write which uh, national forest we're in, um, but also I'm gonna be very specific of what forest road we're on too. Uh, that is not information you get to know, <laughs> um, but it's gonna be pertinent uh, for the categorization of the specimen. By the way, Sharpies, Sharpies are what you need to bring out in the woods because a lot of times it's raining and other pins don't work very good. So, Sharpies do it. I'm really excited to go home and do a little more looking into what this might be. <laughs> I gotta get out of here. That's kind of what a day in the forest looks like sometimes. You don't always come across the honey holes. But the thing is, we found some stuff that's pretty weird. Found some things that I'd never seen before that I'm pretty stoked about. And we had a great walk in the woods, learned a lot. And so I'm gonna have to say goodbye and head home now. Make sure you like the video, leave a little comment if you like, and uh, subscribe.